Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting. I'm Emma, the host of this channel. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the Radiant Star Cowl by Ella Gordon, which I made a couple of months ago. No, not even. A month ago, over Christmas. And the Nighthawk Skull Cap by Wilma Malcolmson that I made to go with it with my leftovers. So it's a little bit about um, construction and stuff, but then also how I use my leftovers. So um, I really loved the really loved the picture on the front of the Shetland Wool Week annual this year in 2020. Um, this is volume six. Six Shetland Wool Week annual 2020. Oh, and it's on the back too. Um, this is a cowl by Ella Gordon, who's a Shetland based designer. I think she works at Jameson and Smith. Yeah, she's got some videos on YouTube about um, about like the differences between Jameson and Smith's different types of wool, and they're awesome. So, highly recommend checking those out. She's also a great designer. Um, she's young, she's like a little bit older than me. Um, where is it? Here it is. The Radiant Star Cowl. I should have marked that. Clearly I'm an amateur. Um, so it's really cozy. <laughs> That's what I thought when I first looked at it. And it says, this cowl is inspired by the all over feral jumper style of the 70s and 80s. The motif features big and small stars in a shaded retro color palette. It is knitted as a tube using two needle sizes, larger on the outside, and then smaller on the inside. This means the inside sits nicely and creates a gentle funnel shape. And that is ingenious, let me tell you. The inside hugs you really well and it's not too tight. Um, it sits so high, like it, it doesn't fall down. So if you're outside, you can wear this. I mean, it's super thick and it's shell and wool, so it's fine gauge. So sometimes I wear a mask underneath um, but usually, like, you can just walk around outside, it covers your face. That's really useful. Sorry if you couldn't hear that. It might have been really muffled because I was talking into my cowl. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> super great. So, um, what did I use to make it? So the main color uh, is Harrisville Designs Shetland, which is not Shetland wool. This is Australian wool spun in a Shetland style. It is almost the same gauge as Shetland wool. It's a little bit thicker. Um, there are, this is a 50 gram skein and there's 217 yards. So there's, there's the same, like, basically the same amount of yardage. There's a little bit less if you do the math because uh, Jameson and Smith has 125 yards. This would be 150 yards if you doubled it. And this is 200, or this would be, excuse me, 250 yards if you doubled it. And this is only 217. So it's a little thicker, but it's lightweight. Um, and it's pretty soft once you, um, so you give it a wash and it's spun here in the US and um, at Harrisville, uh, which is at the Harrisville Mill, which is in New Hampshire. So this is a good, definitely a good yarn. Um, this number 46 oatmeal, I used 150 gram, no, more than 150 gram skein because the whole thing inside and outside is, has the same background. So you need about 100 grams of the background color, a little bit less than 100 grams, but almost. And um, I also used Harrisville Shetland on a comb for this green. This is the color spruce. You can buy these weaving cones at Harrisville, um, like on their website, which I'll link in the show notes. You can also buy these at Webbs, um, which is the yarn store in Massachusetts, the really big one, yarn.com is Webbs, America's yarn store. Um, oops, that just fell. I used for my other green, the darker teal. This is, there you go, you can kind of see that. Yeah, this is Elemental Affects, Shetland Fingering. In Mediterranean Night, so this is 25 grams. Um, it's 118 yards. It's a little tiny bit thicker than Jameson and Smith or Shetland Spindrift, but pretty much same. This one, I will say, when I washed the cowl, this one bled. <laughs> so be careful. It doesn't, I did not notice that it bled onto my hands or my needles, but it did bleed in the water. So not totally color safe. Um, but I think I got that at, doesn't say on the label. It came from a store in like Montana 
when I was buying Spin Cycle once I saw that they had this brand of Shetland wool that I didn't recognize so I picked up a couple of skeins and I really like it so recommended I think it's like American raised Shetland sheep which is also good close to home um, for the burgundy color here in the middle I used Jameson and Smith to apply jumper weight which is a great yarn in shade 134 this is not a heathered shade this is just a, a, a you can see a solid solid color dyed shade so Jameson and Smith and Jameson's of Shetland both have solid and heathered colors um, and it helps uh, create their full range so that's it's awesome <laughs> they both have a lot of colors um, and then I used two colors of Shetland Spindrift so Jameson's of Shetland Shetland Spindrift this one is the color plum and I really only use this for the middle you can see the bright pops um, it is a, a traditional um, thing in Fair Island knitting to use a bright color in the middle so I picked that one because I thought it went nicely with both the greens and the pinks and then I used this one is called sunset sunset is a heathered color um, you can see all those flecks there's like grays and purples and pinks all oranges all together in there it's kind of blowing out let's see there you go no nope. <laughs> anyway um, this one's a solid shade so you can see no heathered no heathering in, in the plum color um, so yeah those those are the six these six colors total um i chose them i because so in the in the original she has two blues and then two yellows and then the orange is the pop so similarly i chose two greens two pinks and then a bright color within one of those families for the pop so i chose the pink i find that when I want to substitute my own colors, the best way to start is by taking something that's already constant, like the groupings of colors, and just swapping that. Because putting together a whole new palette can be really daunting. Um, and if you kind of keep one thing stable, <laughs> um, or go off the pattern and, uh, or, you know, based on the pattern in some way, it helps. So that's great. Um, so once again, I'm gonna show, talk about the construction a little bit. Again, it's double thick, so it's double-sided. Um, it's patterned inside. If I made this again, I would not pattern the inside. So you you start with a size, uh, I think I used a size three in the pattern. It might say to use a size four. I'm a really loose knitter. Um, so I usually go down a size. So I use a size three for the outer tube, and then I did three, three full repeats, and then I switched to a one size smaller and did three more. And that's what the pattern says to do. However, you can make this easier on yourself and just pattern the outside <laughs> and not pattern the inside because you're not gonna turn it inside out. Um, and one of the reasons for that is obviously because it's a funnel, <laughs> it's smaller on the inside. But the other reason is that your three needle bind off, which is how it's, um, how it's finished is also on the inside. So there's the three needle bind off. It's neat, but it's still like obvious because um, you can't turn it inside out when you're done with the bind off. Like I would join sleeves of a sweater with a three needle bind off on the inside so you couldn't see the the mark and then I would turn it inside out. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a neat finish, it's smart, but again, you can just do the inside in a single color stripes, whatever you want. I would even consider doing this in like a fingering and mohair combination which would be really soft against your neck although that might um take away from the structural integrity of the cowl and make it sag because it's not really a like a crisp yarn this really holds a shape shetland wool holds its shape whereas merino mohair combinations or even surrey alpaca it's not quite as stiff it's more drapey um so i really like obviously that it fits well um, there's no long floats. The longest float is six stitches. And the nice thing about this is that you, even if you're uncomfortable with six, a st six stitch float and fingering weight, which isn't that long, it's really just about that long, um, you don't have to worry about catching them because you turn the whole thing inside, like you fold it so that none of the ends are, like the inside isn't visible at all. It's all just tucked in. So you're not going to catch your floats on anything, even if you're wearing earrings or something else, a hair clip, um, which is great.
So don't even worry about catching the floats. The three needle bind off is really efficient. You could kitchener it together, um, but that would take longer and you're not gonna see it anyway. So that's fine. Um, another reason I like it is that it's a good base line for like, if you make this, you could easily substitute a different chart. So if you wanted to do bands like Fair Isle bands rather than an all over Fair Isle bands or like in this hat, we have Fair Isle bands. So a band, there's a small band and there's another big band. You could do that as long as you keep the stitch count um, close enough to the original, it would fit really well. Um, you could edit it so that you don't have an inside part at all. You just have one, just the outside. You'd have floats um, that were catchable in that case. So you'd have to be aware of that, but there's lots of ways you could edit this. Um, you could make it longer, you could make it shorter, depending on what you like. Um, I like that it's just a, it's a plain tube. So there's a lot you can do with it. So there's the Radiant Star Cowl. So then when I was done with this, I had a lot of yarn left over and I needed to use a second skein of another yet skein of the, so I guess it would have been the third skein of the Shetland. Um, I have a lot of this, so that was fine. Um, but to make the hat, I used like one extra skein of the background color, but then the main color, it was all just scraps or the, excuse me, the, the main color, the contrasting colors. I just used the scraps from uh, the Radiant Star Cowl and it went, it turned out well. Um, what I essentially wanted was something like Katie's Kep, which is a pattern by Wilma Malcolmson that she did for the 2020 Shetland Wool Week Annual. It's free on Ravelry. I'll link it in the show notes. There's been tons. You should totally make it. It's awesome. Um, and I really love the star construction of the crown. It's not really construction. It's just a pattern. Um, <laughs> but I really liked it. And this hat is the Nighthawk skull cap. It's also by Wilma Malcolmson, same designer. So same not totally the same crown. There's like a little bit of difference in between the points of the star, but I liked the star. I might have considered substituting the star even if this pattern didn't have it. Um, again, I liked it. Katie's kept, but I just wanted something a little bit different and I didn't want to design my own because I was not feeling like it, I guess. <laughs> um, and so this pattern is in the Shetland Wool Adventures Journal. This is a new journal. It's edited by, I think her name is Nisa. Her name is Nisa Hay, right? Um, yep, it was published last last year. She says she's working on a second one already. I'm really excited about that. There's a whole welcome message. Um, I think I got this from the website. You can get these at the Woolly Thistle, which is an online yarn retailer based in Lebanon, New Hampshire, um, or West Lebanon, somewhere up near like Norwich, Vermont, West Leb. It's it's where she's based. Um, you can also get Jameson and Smith there. You can also sometimes get Shelton Spindrift there, um, but that's harder to get, I think. So there's just like, they don't produce as much. Um, so, which I will discuss in a different video. So you can check that out. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can get a lot of your Shetland wool, uh, One of the, what's the word I'm looking for? Stuff, <laughs> paraphernalia at the Woolly Thistle. Um, Cause the owner's from Scotland, that's why. So this is great. Um, there are a bunch of patterns in it. There's also like recipes and walking tours of Shetland, you know, when we can all go to Shetland again. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six patterns. It's a good deal. Um, so this pattern, the night crop, night hawk skull cap. Uh, there's the picture. So she knit this in Shetland Spindrift from Lynn Malcolmson. Um, let me see that. In a bunch of colors, like dark teal. And uh, she says, well, this, the, the author says, she has been on the Shetland textile scene for a long time and her expertise and skills are highly valued. Um, the inspiration for the Nighthawk skull cap, writes Wilma, came from a visit to Hoxha Tapestry Gallery in Orkney which is not in Shetland. It's a different archipelago in Scotland. The tapestries there by Layla Thompson are a must see for anyone interested in textiles. I bought a card and then designed a swatch with Spindrift yarn by Jamesons of Shetland. The colors were ones I liked, but had not used before. That's kind of nice. So she had a, an adventure choosing her colors. Um, I didn't have those colors. <laughs> I had some of them, but not all of them. Um, there's like 
250 colors from Jameson's of Shetland. Not, maybe not 250, but there's a lot. Um, and I don't have that many. So I just used my leftovers. And there's a, so I used the, the spruce green here, just here, down here in the band, and then in the very top of the star. Um, I used just the three pinks for the OXO motif down here. I thought that the pink against the teal would be a really nice, <laughs> uh, obvious color pop. So I used that. It's definitely unexpected. And then there's another band of those three in the middle here. And then the crown, I just started with the brightest pink and went up through the, the darkest pink, started with the, and then finished with the dark teal and the green. Um, what else do I like about this? Uh, yeah, I just basically used the colors um, as I saw fit. If I didn't like it, I would have ripped it back and used them in a different order. So um, that's always an option. If you're not comfortable with ripping out your knitting, you should practice it because it's a very useful, uh, it's not a skill anyone can rip out their knitting, but it's, it gets emotionally easier the more you have to do it. So if you don't like something, just rip it out as soon as you realize you don't like it. It's good practice. Um, and oh yeah, one thing I really like about it is how the star is created. So um, in, if you are interested in this, you can download Katie's Kep for free on Ravelry. So you can, you can check it out. But the way that the star is done is with these central double decreases, every other round going up the middle here on, of each point, there are six points. And they, they're kind of raised a little bit, but they're not, um, not too raised. Um, central double decrease is, in case you don't know, it is when you slip one stitch and then you knit two together. So you slip the stitch and then you're knitting two together so it's slanting. Well, this is probably mirrored for you, so you know what I mean. And then you, you um, pass the slip stitch over the knit, the two knitted together so it, it makes a little point and there's a little bit of raised, a raised bump, which creates some texture, so that's fun. Um, and the one last thing I wanna say before I finish this is that I recommend when you store your leftovers, this is important, um, store them away from the rest of your Shetland wool balls because number one, leftover balls, um, they get tangly because there's like ends coming out of them and they'll tangle around your like new wool balls, like no ends here. It's really nice and neat. I keep this separate. So I actually have a separate bag. I have a big vacuum seal bag for my Shetland wool. And then I have a smaller one just for leftovers. So I always wind them into balls just because they're easier to weigh. You can always weigh them to see how much you have. Um, there's a bunch in here. Some of them are bigger than others. The problem is that they're not labeled, so you have to have a good memory. <laughs> um, at this point I do, but there's not very many in here. So as, uh, as that fills up, I might be screwed. <laughs> so that'll be fun. And anyway, that is the, oh, I'll, show, I'll put it on so you can see. There we go, that's the back. So it fits really well. It's the same, has the same number of rounds as the Katie's cap, there's the top. You can see this. Oh, I didn't even say what I was wearing. This is um, this is a vanilla sweater from the, well, is inspired by the vanilla sweater from the Woolly Thistle that was published in June. When I knit this, the Woolly Thistle had only released the pattern in one size and it was too big for me. So I bought Ann Bud's book of top-down sweaters, which is how Corinne from the Woolly Thistle said that she had designed the vanilla sweater. So I just made a plain raglan sweater in, um, in my own size and finished it by picking up stitches around the neck. I didn't do a super neat job of that, as you can see here. Um, it kind of splits more like a boat neck, but we learn, we live and learn when picking up stitches. Um, it has a split hem, which you can't see. Um, I guess I can stand up and you can see, maybe you can see how <laughs> um, small this desk is. <laughs> it has a split hem and it's knit in Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. So this is designed to be knitted in Rama Fennel Garn, which is slightly thicker than two ply jumper weight. So um, I had to adjust my needle size a little bit, but the gauge is 20 stitches over four inches. So it's pretty loose. It doesn't take very long. Um, 
I'm like a women's size small and I used eight balls. Um, you, but you might, I bought 10 just to be safe. So eight 25 gram balls, which means this whole thing weighs like 200 grams. It's a super lightweight sweater. Um, and the color is FC 21. So it's lavender tan mix, I think is what people call it some, on some websites. Um, it's heathered with lavender and tan. You can see it here, sort of, maybe. I have to figure out how to make this thing focus. <laughs> um, yeah, it has a little, just a little cuff. It is super comfy, super lightweight. I wear it all the time. If you have not made a vanilla sweater, you should make one. Um, and it is soft enough to wear next to the skin. Shetland wool, I mean, some people don't wear it next to the skin. It's, that's gonna be a personal choice. But if you like woolly wool, it's pretty soft, especially after a wash or two. So I recommend, I recommend making a plain vanilla sweater in it. Obviously, knit your feral sweaters in it, that's normal. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's all for today. Um, thank you for watching. And this has been Tiny Desk Knitting.